Hi, my name is Heather, and today I'm going to show you how to make a pattern text SVG in VectorQ that you can bring into Cricut Design Space. This is the second video of a series where I'm going to show you how to make SVGs that you can sell. And there are different styles of SVGs, and so in each video I'm going to show you how to make a different kind of SVG. Today I'm going to show you how to make text with a pattern inside. This is really popular. You can do a whole alphabet with a pattern inside the letters so people can just use whichever letters they want. They can use them as monograms. You can also do catchy words or sayings. You could do a saying with just one word as the patterned word. So there's a lot that you can do with this technique and you can make tons of great SVGs that you can sell online or share with your friends or whatever you want to do with them. I'm in VectorQ and I'm going to create a new drawing. I want to go with a Halloween design, so I'm going to have the word boo with spider webs in it. So first I'm going to create my text, so I'm going to go to the text tool and click on my canvas wherever I want the text to be. And then I'm going to double click in that blinking cursor box and I'll just type out my text and I'll hide the keyboard. If I want to change the font, I can go to tool text up here and pick a different font. But I like the one that I have right here because it's nice and bold and thick. So it's good to have a nice thick font so that you have a lot of room to draw in it. So I'll just keep it as is. And then I want the letters to actually be like overlapping. I just think that'll look better because it'll all be a continuous pattern under it. So I'm gonna go to tracking and I'm just going to bring it down. And now I'm gonna go to actions, text, convert to curves. Now these are all curves, but you can see this purple G up here in the corner, and that means that it's a group. So we need to ungroup it before we can do anything else with it. So let's go to our select tool, and it's already selected, and we'll just go to edit, and up here we have the ungroup button, and we'll click that. So now this is all ungrouped, and then you can see that they're overlapping shapes, so let's just click combine and now they're all one shape and now we can apply a stroke and take away the fill. So I'm going to go to appearance, let me collapse that one, and we'll go to fill and if this is all blacked out it's just kind of a bug so you just want to click on it's very light but there's an actual fill button here and then you just click that and then it all shows up and then we'll pick note fill. And then let's go to stroke and click on the stroke button. And then you can pick black and you can make it a little bit bigger if you want, maybe like that. And now we can convert this to a shape. So let's collapse that. We'll go to actions, edit paths, outline stroke. And now we have our shape of our text. Now before we start drawing the spider webs, we want them to be on a separate layer. So let's go to layers and we're going to lock this layer so that we don't move it around or anything. So press the lock button and then we're going to create a new layer and make sure that's selected so it has the little red arrow next to it and that's where we're going to draw. So I'm going to grab my brush tool and just start drawing and see if it draws how you want it to. I think I want mine to be a little bit thinner. So I'm going to go up here to tool brush and then I'm just going to bring the size down a little bit. And I have it on the single width little pencil here. If you want to mess around with the one that does different widths you can click on that one, but it doesn't really go with the pressure of the pencil. It's really just the beginning and the end are going to be thinner than inside. Anyways, I'm going to grab the pencil here 
and I'm going to zoom in and I'll start drawing my spider web. I think it would be cute if it kind of comes out of right here. So I'm just going to make the lines for the web. It doesn't really matter what it looks like inside here because we're just going to delete that part out. So that's why I'm not really worrying about making that part look nice. And then I'll just connect them. And if you mess up, like right here, I don't like that it kind of became one big blob. So I'm going to click the undo button up here. We can make some more spider webs here. So maybe I'll use this line to be like the start of a web. And I think I'll pull this line in here. So I'm going to grab my node select tool. Oh, actually, since there's a node there, we can just delete this one. So I'll just press the delete button. And then I'll just grab this one and pull it in. And now I can go back to my brush tool and continue. I remembered like halfway through it that spider webs look really cool when they're kind of uneven widths between the sections. So I'm gonna grab my node select tool and just modify some of these and kind of make them a little bit more uneven. All right, and now I'll do one last spider web. Maybe I'll make it coming from the bottom right here so that it's like a little different than that one. Now that we're done drawing, we can grab everything. And remember, the word boo isn't selected since it's on a separate layer that's locked. So we're grabbing basically everything but not the word boo. We're going to go to Edit, Combine, and then this combined all of this into one shape, all the spider webs. Now we just need to get rid of all our extra pieces outside of it. All right, now if this was Illustrator, then there would be a much easier way to do this, but it's not Illustrator and, you know, there are some bugs in this program. So what we're going to do is actually grab the eraser tool and we're just going to erase the extra parts. So I'm going to go like this and you can see where it's kind of overlapping. So you can just go like that and just erase any parts that are outside of it. And if you mess up and erase too much, just click the undo button. If this was an illustrator, we could actually slice it. So we would be able to use this tool, but it's very buggy in this program. And unfortunately, it just doesn't work for something like this. I think it's probably just a little too complicated with all the paths and stuff. And if you want to change the size of the eraser, you're just going to go to Tool Eraser and you can bring it down a little bit or bring it up if you want. Now we're all finished. If you wanted, you could add like a little spider to it or, you know, whatever you want to do to make it yours and make it creative. But I'm just going to go to Layers and unlock the bottom layer so they're both unlocked now. And then I'm just going to select everything. And we're just going to go to Edit, Combine. 
and now it's all one shape. And now it's ready to go. So now we can just export it as an SVG and Vector Q is free to use, but to export to an SVG, you do have to upgrade to the paid version. I don't remember the price exactly, but I'll just put it right up here for you to see. And so if you purchase it, then you can export to an SVG. And that's just a one-time fee. It's not even monthly or anything. So now we're going to go to Share. And you can pick SVG. Open in save to files and give it a name and now we can just open it up in Cricut Design Space to make sure everything looks okay and I'm just gonna go to upload browse files there's my boo and I'll give it a name so there's my little boo I think this is a great project that you can use in so many different ways. You can do monograms with cool patterns in the back. You can do seasonal words like this one. So, you know, just have fun with it. I hope this was helpful. I would love to see what you make. So if you want, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com as usual. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. And let me know what you would like to learn how to do for an SVG. And maybe it'll be an upcoming tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!